The Woods family understands something. You just don't take, you give. And if you want these freedoms to continue, you have to get involved. You have to be a leader. The Woodses are known for their generosity of time, energy, and finances in supporting the NRA. My husband and I were in the same class in seventh grade, which was kind of fun. And we started dating in 11th grade and got married early and had four children very quickly. And before you know it, that's, you know, that was, that was it. My parents started dating in high school and they stayed together up until my dad died in 2008. That's a long time. They both had their own distinct lives, but yet were connected. And I really admire them for that. It takes a lot of hard work and they made it work. John Woods was a person that I got acquainted with uh, really back when the NRA Foundation started. When the foundation was first organized in the early 90s, John was one of a small group of people that was invited to serve on the organizational board of trustees. Terrific individual, closer than a brother to me, frankly. We made a good team together. He believed in financial stability and security through endowments. And that was the way you assured financial stability and security for the future of the organization. Daughter Julie Hill grew up with a strong respect for firearms, but it wasn't until later in life that she began to understand what it truly means to stand up for your constitutional freedoms. I grew up with guns in the home. We spent a lot of time at our family farm. We spent a lot of time in the backyard. So, I mean, I grew up around that. I didn't hunt myself as a teen or in my early 20s. I went to college. Then a couple years later, Dad said, well, come work for me. So I did. I helped him in his marketing department, and I met my husband there. We eventually started dating. And then we knew right away. We knew really fast. It was just a really good chemistry for the two of us. Yes, I think we're a great team. <laughs> yeah. So I got married and had babies, started raising my kids. The NRA things we did before all started because of the hunting and all the NRA guys. And I'm sure John may be a life member 100 years ago. But it wasn't until in Indianapolis, the annual meeting, I thought, I'll see if Julie wants to go with me. And that's what started this whole thing. I watched the enthusiasm of all the members and all of the people together and their passion for their country and what they stood for come together and fight for their Second Amendment rights. And it was like one big giant family, no matter what level you were at or where you lived or anywhere. And I was really, really empowered by that. And it just came together for me right there. I want to be able to protect myself and I fear that those rights are gonna be taken away. And I really wanted to help. And uh, lo and behold, who would have thought that Linda and I would end up in the room next to right you next and to your us. mother. That's For right. For 70 some thousand people there, what are the odds of that? I saw you walking down the hall. And we I went, passed. Hey. Julie talked to me about her desire to replicate her father's philanthropic philosophy as it pertains to the NRA. And asked me, she says, I'd like to better understand how my dad felt about it because I'd like to carry that legacy forward. And I said, Wayne, how can I help? And I said, well, Julie, that's up to you. And I said, if you answer that question, you will know. And all of a sudden, I started realizing with the Second Amendment, to me, what it meant to me. A person who doesn't really shoot, doesn't really hunt, but believes, yes, indeed, that I need to protect myself and I want to protect my family. So uh, the answer to that question is obvious. It was Women's Leadership Forum. Wayne said, I want you to start off and do exactly what your father did at the beginning of the foundation, the same way your father did back in 1990. So we created the Women's Leadership Forum Endowment.
Julie's got a real keen sense of what should be said and what we should fight for and defend. It's because she believes it. It's, it's coming from her gut. It's just instinctive. It's time. It's time for the women to stand up. All women, ones that work, ones that are moms, moms that have nothing to do with guns at all, ones that believe in their Second Amendment rights. It's very interesting since since I've talked about it with some of my friends, they all say the exact same thing. They say to me, I didn't really know that about the NRA, that I didn't know women were involved. I think a lot of them think it's an old boys club. They're beginning to really see the tremendous potential that women hold for the future in NRA and its growth and its strength. I think a lot of people think only of good old country boys with the NRA, but there are just so many people that believe in all those amendments. There's millions of women that share my values and beliefs out there. And I think right now, the NRA will keep us strong and we have to support it. In October, 2014, Julie and Wayne traveled to Middleburg, Virginia to the Women's Leadership Forum Summit to announce the launch of the NRA Women's Leadership Forum Endowment. I'm very honored to be here today to share my story with you all. I've reached a point in my life where I worry about the future and protecting my children and eventually my grandchildren's rights. You know, I'm just a suburban baseball mom and ballet mom who believes now more so than ever that right to defend ourselves being trampled. My hope is that together we will continue to protect, engage, and learn about our precious Second Amendment. I think we need to do something. And this is how I choose to make it happen. This is my fight here. You know, it just seems like it's something that makes her so happy to go and do. And speaking to a large crowd of people and sharing her stories and seems to inspire other people to do great things. That just makes me happy. See her carrying on what my grandfather did. It's certainly a legacy to him to have Julie start a foundation like John did. I think it's great. I'm very proud. Might have been the right combination of, of fervor for what her dad believed in what her mother believed in, what she herself believed in. That kind of legacy is really important for all of us to understand how to give. I've come to realize that the NRA is an amazing organization of God-fearing, family-oriented, hard-working, and down-to-earth normal people. Judy Woods and I will be reopening our family farm on the legendary property my dad loves so much. It's quite beautiful, and there's nothing like it in the world and I'm very excited to share that with you all. For many years, the Woods Valley Farm has been a gathering place for men and women of the NRA. This special corner of the world has given birth to countless friendships, laughter, and hope for the future. You know, we had a lot of fun coming here to the farm and hunting. What John and Junie did was they would host every year down here at this beautiful Woods Valley Farm a white-tailed deer opener at the start of the season, and they did that for 16 years. And so we had a rule at the farm that you had to shoot the antlers outside the ears. If you shot smaller than that, you had to give $1,000 to the NRA. That was John's rule. I just have amazing memories of the farm whenever I think about it, from when I was younger and until now. When it's in the springtime, it's really pretty. Everything's blooming, all the trees are green. There's many things like hunting, fishing, collecting stuff, watching wildlife, taking a nature walk. I just like the wildlife and I like to hear the noises. You find a place where you can just hear the world, you know, hear nature. It's important. A staple to John's legacy circles the grounds of the farm a fully functioning train that he and his mother wanted to create together. John and his mom both loved trains. My mother and I uh, had a discussion and we decided to build a, a miniature railroad. The, the concept was to build the railroad as sort of a family undertaking. It was felt that this would be a unifying family event. And so they just built a train on this 1100 piece parcel. It's amazing. <laughs> people would come down and we'd ride the train. It's quite a testament to what he did, part of his legacy there.
For me, it's the turkey hunting, and it's just a cool place to hang out. And we watch this train be built. I mean, you look at this entire place, and it's all legacy. The legacy of everything that John did from conservation and herd management, all those things. So the NRA is no different than anything else that he had a long-term plan for. I mean, you could just tell the guy was always thinking forward. I really feel this is how I could stand up and fight by starting this endowment and paying that forward for my children. I would be nothing without my family. I definitely believe in the Second Amendment and I would like to discover what that means to me in the future and then definitely I would love to be a part of that. And we're gonna carry on the family tradition big time.